Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a classic favorite daily trainer from Saucony. It's the Ride 15. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, I didn't have a chance to preview this video and the small synopsis is my own. Here we go. The Ride 15 from Saucony is a classic, moderately cushioned, neutral daily trainer that got a complete refresh this year. We get a brand new upper and, most importantly, a brand new midsole that we'll talk about later on in the review. And if you like the Ride but you want some more stability, they have something called the Guide, which has some medial posting and gives you a little bit more of a stable experience. The Ride 15 actually went down in weight and by a substantial margin. We went from 9.4 ounces down to 8.8. .8. So we lost about 0.6 ounces, which is pretty amazing considering we actually get a bigger midsole on this year's model. In the heel we get 32.5 millimeters, very precise in the heel with an 8 millimeter drop that brings us to 24.5 millimeters in the forefoot. This is a half millimeter increase over last year. However, the total volume in the midsole is somewhat more substantial than the previous version. And speaking of the midsole, it's still that power run foam throughout the entire shoe. However, the power run foam this year has now been reformulated and re-engineered to be both softer and lighter, which is a big reason this shoe went down 0.6 ounces in weight. And if you're not familiar, Power Run Foam is actually an EVA material that's been redesigned and has some other elements mixed in to give it better energy return and have better durability. Because this is a redesigned shoe, we get a brand new type of geometry to the midsole and something called underfoot contouring, which essentially means your foot sits lower within the midsole and allows for sidewalls on both the lateral side and the medial side. This helps give the shoe a little bit more stability, even though it is a neutral setup. And this is also why the midsole looks to be so much bigger while only going up half a millimeter compared to last year. Your foot just sinks down a little bit further into the midsole, which again, really helps with stability. And the other thing I'll say is that you have a really wide forefoot section. So if you take a look, you can see that the midsole actually extends past the upper on both sides, and you just have a really wide area to land on in that forefoot region. I thought this really helped with the overall stability. I tried to move my foot around, kind of did the one foot test, and I thought it was just like a super stable experience, especially in that forefoot section. So overall, even though it's a neutral shoe, I thought it was relatively stable because your foot is sinking down into the midsole with basically kind of walls of foam on both sides, and that really wide forefoot helps with just with the overall stability. Now when it comes to the Power Run foam, it's definitely lighter and definitely softer than last year. However, it's not like overly soft, or I wouldn't rank this as like a soft foam. You definitely get a nice level of kind of squish to it and like impact protection has a good level of cushioning, but it's definitely not like an overly soft plush foam if that makes sense. Now when it comes to like the stability and being able to pick up the pace with something that's not as soft, it was actually quite nice just because you feel like you have a solid base underfoot that's not really too mushy, it doesn't feel like your foot's getting lost in the foam. So it is a slightly firmer, I guess, EVA based foam, um, while it does still have a nice level of impact protection. And if you want to compare it to something, you can kind of take a look at like the Power Run PB, which is their PBAX based foam, found on like something like the Endorphin Speed 2 up in the corner there. And that's gonna be a lot bouncier, a lot softer compared to the updated Power Run foam. Another cool thing is the insert. It's made out of something called Power Run Plus, which is different than Power Run, which is what the midsole is made out of. And I realize that's confusing. So Power Run is EVA based and Power Run Plus, what the liner is made out of, is a polyurethane or PU foam, which essentially is pretty bouncy, you feel pretty squishy as well. And you get a pretty substantial liner, which I think is pretty comfortable and helps with the overall impact protection. So overall, to summarize the ride of the Ride 15, pun intended, it's definitely lighter and softer compared to last year. However, it's not like a soft, mushy, bouncy foam kind of feels like your traditional EVA based midsole where it's kind of more focused on impact protection doesn't have a ton of energy return but does feel nice on foot plus that thick liner made out of power run plus a PU based foam I thought was a nice addition to the shoe and it's something you kind of notice it's nothing that kind of moves the needle drastically either way but I thought it was a nice touch now when it comes to the flexibility of the shoe it's pretty flexible in the forefoot and pretty flexible overall and a big reason for that is if you take the liner out and you look in there you'll see that there's some sculpting or some prefabricated lines that are just Designed to have the shoe kind of bend in the key places. A lot of shoes have this, but you can actually see it when you take the liner out. Overall, the shoe is pretty flexible compared to like other moderately cushioned uh, daily trainers, and I think it really didn't like harm or hurt the shoe in any way. It's just something to note. Moving on to the outsole, we do get less rubber than last year, which again helps the shoe reduce in the weight department, and you do get a thicker pad of rubber on the lateral side of the heel. The lugs and traction patterns can be a little bit less substantial than last year. However, I really didn't have an issue with grip just because that forefoot area is so wide and had a ton of surface area that grips the ground. But as I get more miles in the shoe and as I test it more, we'll see how the durability holds up. 
Moving on to the upper, you get a very breathable engineered mesh. It's basically two layers. You get a top layer with some larger mesh that looks pretty open, and then underneath that is a mesh with slightly smaller holes. Overall, the breathability was very nice. Moving on to the midfoot, I had no issues. I thought the lockdown was secure. You also get these two kind of ribbon cables on both sides of the shoe, which are intended to kind of give you even more secure lockdown. Personally, I didn't really feel like I needed them. They felt more decorative than anything else. I thought the upper material did a a fine job keeping my foot in place, but they're there nonetheless if you absolutely want to utilize them. I just didn't feel like they were absolutely necessary. Moving on to the tongue, it is gusseted and kind of rather wide. It wraps your foot very nicely, kind of has a very consistent level of padding throughout. No major complaints. I actually thought it was quite nice. Moving to the back of the shoe, the ankle and Achilles area, I thought was very comfortable. Didn't have any heel lift or anything like that. Has a moderate amount of cushioning, nothing too crazy or nothing to write home about. And the heel counter itself is relatively rigid. Internal heel counter did its job and I thought was very secure. And on the back of the heel counter, we get uh, an elastic pull tab, which is uh, pretty elastic. My only gripe first, very first world problem is it's kind of annoying to get your finger under there and then pull. It's like the most minor of complaints, but I'm gonna make that complaint either way since I'm looking at the shoe. I'd rather just have a piece of fabric that I can just grab right away instead of kind of digging my finger underneath. But it's elastic, it works, it gets the job done, feels very secure. It's just annoying to get your finger under, which again, I realize is such a small thing to complain about. The tongue also has a pull tab, which is actually quite nice. I like when companies do this, it makes it easier to get your foot in and out of the shoe. So those are all the basic facts about the shoe. Let's talk about what works well for the Ride 15 and what doesn't work so well. The first big positive, at least for me, was the overall ride of the Ride 15. The fact that your foot kind of sinks a little bit more into the midsole means it just feels more secure on foot, feels just a little bit more stable on the back of the shoe. And then that really wide forefoot is something I personally liked. It had a really nice overall flow to it just because I felt like I had a stable platform to land and run on. Another big positive for me was the upper. It kind of walked that line of being secure yet breathable and light. It just felt nice on foot. You get a really pleasant experience. It kept my foot from moving anywhere and I really liked the ankle and Achilles lockdown. Now, again, those midfoot straps, I don't know how much they do, but the overall fit and security of the shoe was really good for me. And the last positive for me was that it was just a solid, versatile daily trainer. No complaints. It's lightweight, breathable, nice level of impact protection. If I want to pick up the pace, I can do it. If I want it for my easy day, I can do it as well. I think Saucony made some good updates here. Just felt like a solid, good, reliable daily trainer to me. However, the Ride 15 isn't perfect, and there's some things that you probably should just keep in mind. The first potential negative is the outsole. They stripped a lot of the rubber off, they reduced the lug size, and this helps make the shoe a lot lighter, a lot faster. The lug pattern is smoother, which helps for a quicker turnover. But I think when it comes to durability, especially if you're used to the previous versions of the ride, you'll probably dis be disappointed just because they removed so much of the rubber. Now, I haven't had any issues with the durability or traction just because you have really a ton of surface area, but we'll see what happens over time. And I think if you're someone who uh, likes a shoe just for having a ton of durable premium materials, this might be a disappointment. And another negative, and this is more something just to keep in mind, is the power run foam isn't super bouncy uh, and isn't like overly exciting. So if you want something a little bit more bouncy, a little bit more energy filled, a little bit more, maybe a little bit more lively, I would go with the Power Run PB that's on the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 or some of their other models. That's a P-Bax based foam, has a little bit different properties to it. Uh, not to say that the midsole here is bad, I definitely think it's an improvement over last year, just because it has a better squish to it or a little better level of softness is probably a better way to say it, and it is definitely lighter. However, if you're someone who wants a little bit more excitement out of the midsole, I would probably go look in a different direction, namely, ma namely uh, like the Speed 2 with their uh, Power Run PB foam. And the last negative, and this is something I will harp on, is the darn pull tab. It's not bad, it really isn't. It's just one small little thing that I'm gonna throw my two cents in is I hate digging my finger under it to pull it, because by the time I do that, I'm like, ah, oh, screw it, I'll shove my foot in the shoe. Um, you're probably like, Ryan, why are you complaining about this? And I probably shouldn't, uh, but if I had a choice, I'd rather just have a piece of string that I can just easily pull instead of having to dig my, my finger under. So, that's my uh, first world problem complaint for this review. So where does that leave us? Well, there's nothing that keeps me from recommending this shoe. I thought there was no fatal flaws. I actually thoroughly enjoyed running in it. It's just a nice, solid daily training option that actually did not weigh that much. I'm actually happy they brought the amount of weight down. They increased the amount of surface area, gave it a really wide forefoot, a relatively stable, well-cushioned experience. I thought the impact protection was really good, and it was just a versatile shoe that I enjoyed running in. Plus the upper, super comfortable, not too minimal, not too maximal, and just but just felt very comfortable on foot. However, if you're someone who wants something 
something that's a little bit more exciting, a little bit faster, maybe a little bit more energy in the midsole, I'd probably go in a different direction. Or for someone who wants a shoe that potentially has more durability to it with more rubber on the outsole, I would probably again go with a different option. But overall, I thought it's a really fun, reliable daily trainer that I just thoroughly enjoyed. Well, that concludes my review. Let me know in the comments what you think of the redesign. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.